Hi everyone, so we are entering our third part of the semester. Um, first we did chapters one through nine, which was general chemistry. Um, then we did chapters 10 through 13, which was organic chemistry. And now we're gonna use those two things and put them together um, in chapters 14 through 18 to talk about biomolecules or biological chemistry. So it's exciting because we get to apply all the things we've been learning um, into um, some larger molecules. It's also maybe a bit daunting because the molecules are large as you can see here. So we're gonna introduce um, the next few chapters on this page um, and then you'll see this page show up in the next four chapters. So today's um, biomolecule is carbohydrates, and you can see that we kind of have the same pattern of talking about all of our different biomolecules. So when we talk about carbohydrates, um, we're gonna talk about these kind of large molecules that are in the shape of rings, have some carbons, have some oxygens, and this would be what we would call a monomer. Um, so one piece that makes up a larger polymer. So in carbohydrates, our monomers are specifically referred to as monosaccharides, and that's what we're looking at here. This would be glucose, is what we see in this picture. Um, now, we take those and we string them together, and you can't hardly see it, but here are tons and tons of those glucoses all connected together. Um, and so the polymer of a carbohydrate is called a polysaccharide. Um, and those polysaccharides can be used for storage or they can be used for structure. Um, examples of these sugars, um, if we're talking are carbohydrates, um, monosaccharides, common examples would be the glucose like we have shown there or fructose found in food. Um, example of polysaccharides, the one that's shown here is glycogen and that's what animals use to store um, energy. Um, so those are carbohydrates. Um, something else we're going to do in this next few chapters is keep these different big biomolecules in context in terms of the cell and also um, metabolism. And metabolism is going to be where we end the um, semester in chapter 18. So when we talk about carbs, carbs especially are the bulk of our food, assuming you're eating kind of a typical diet. Um, and so we could refer to that food also as fuel. Um, sorry, my writing's messy. Um, and sometimes we would refer to this also as what we call a substrate, which is the reactant in an enzyme catalyzed reaction. So in the cell, um, we are going to have our food or fuel, our carbohydrates, come into the cell. Um, so this is a cell we're going to eat, food is in our digestive system, and then eventually it goes into the cell. Um, if we look at that in terms of this metabolic pathway here, um, here is our ingested food at the top, and we're going to focus on the carbohydrate pathway in this chapter. So carbs get broken down into glucose and other sugars, continue, get broken down into what we call um, acetyl groups go through the common metabolic pathway, which is the citric acid cycle, continue, and then eventually at the end of all of this, we get a whole bunch of ATP. And we get, on average, more than half of our energy from carbohydrates. So this is a big deal for our carbs here. Um, it's kind of following through the pathway. Now to take a quick summary look at these other um, types of biomolecules, um, in the next chapter we'll be studying lipids and lipids are hydrophobic, so water-fearing, or amphipathic. Um, many contain a fatty acid, and there are a lot of types of lipids, so we can't just break it down into monomer polymer like we did over here. Um, a couple of examples, triglycerides, those are fats that we eat, and also phospholipids. And phospholipids are what make up um, our cell membrane. So that's what we see here is a close-up of the cell membrane. And if we were to add that over here, um, we've got phospholipids as our membrane around the cell and also around the nucleus. So we'll be seeing more of those in chapter 15. Um, next chapter will be proteins. This will be a long two-day chapter because there's so much to learn about proteins. So protein monomers, um, proteins are made up of amino acids and you can see one of those here. The amino comes from the amine, 
and the acid comes from the carboxylic acid. So that kind of builds on what we saw last chapter. Um, when you string a bunch of poly or amino acids together, you get what we call a polypeptide um, or a protein. Um, and here is an example of a protein. If you've got the color version that has color um, to it, some purple ribbons, but if you don't, it's fine. We're just looking at um, what we call helices there. So examples, what we're looking at here, we're looking at the amino acid valine um, and the protein that we find in our muscles called myoglobin. Um, finally, we will take a look at chapter 17, nucleic acids. Um, and so this is an example of the monomer that we use. This is building up DNA. You can see the DNA strands here. So here we have a nucleotide, um, and that nucleotide has some common components that we've seen before. We have a phosphate, um, so it's made of a phosphate, um, a base with lots of nitrogens in it, and a sugar, which is what we're learning in this chapter. So we're gonna see those carbs show up um, down here as well. Now, when you string a bunch of those nucleotides together, you get what we call a nucleic acid. And an example um, up here on top, this nucleotide, um, we name adenosine monophosphate, or AMP. Sometimes you'll see that show up in different pathways. And then our double helix here, we call deoxy, as in without oxygen, ribonucleic acid. Ribose is the sugar here, um, and that is DNA. So that gives you a little picture, hopefully, oh, a little picture of what we're going to be doing for the next um, few weeks. And um, you'll see us kind of focus in on one of these sections each day.